Hello there, you're watching All24 News live from Algiers. Shortly are the headlines. Algerian President Abdelmajid Taboun receives Minister of Interior of Saudi Arabia, Emir Abdelaziz bin Saud bin Nayef bin Abdelaziz Al Saud. Algeria's foreign exchange reserves exceeds the threshold of $60 billion, equivalent to two and a half years of imports of goods and services. Also in our news, Russian President Vladimir Putin hosted on Tuesday the Commonwealth of Independent States leaders in St. Petersburg for the organization's yearly informal summit. Also coming up, 71 Chinese Air Force aircraft, including fighter jets and drones, entered the airspace of Taiwan. Hello again and welcome to the program Fast in Our News. Algerian President Mr. Abdelmajid Taboun received on Monday in Algiers the Minister of Interior of Saudi Arabia, Emir Abdelaziz bin Saud bin Nayef bin Abdelaziz Al Saud. The two sides reviewed the bilateral relations and security cooperation between the two countries. The meeting took place at the Presidency Building in the presence of the Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency of the Republic, Mr. Abdelaziz Khalaf, and Minister of the Interior, Local Authorities and National Planning, Mr. Brahim Murad. Algerian President uh, Abdelmajid Taboun ordered uh, the work initiation to increase gas production with the aim of boosting exports in implementation of Algeria's commitments with its foreign partners regarding the roadmap for the development of hydrogen in the country. The Algerian president valued the strategy of creating new sources of energy in Algeria and the adoption of seawater desalination plants for the development of hydrogen. The third conference of ministers and leaders responsible for technical and vocational education in the Arab world adopted the Comprehensive Development Plan for the sector. Arab participants stressed the need to strengthen joint Arab action to protect Arab national security and its comprehensive sense. Zara Fergeni has this report. Algeria concluded on Monday the proceedings of a third conference of ministers and leaders responsible for technical and vocational education and training in the Arab world. This event, supervised by Algerian Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman, aims at adopting a comprehensive development plan for the sectors of education and vocational training and protecting Arab national security in all its dimensions. It is worth noting that among the issues related to this aspect, the importance of the field of technical and vocational education and training which stands out in the agenda of your esteemed bodies, it constitutes the basic foundation for providing qualified human resources for all Arab Arab countries that seek to provide the conditions for economic and social development for their people. The participation of all these countries is evidence of the importance of these systems and their pivotal role in advancing the economies of our Arab countries. Algeria focuses through this conference on strengthening relations between the Arab countries, in addition to exchanging expertise, capacity development and educational programs for young professionals. The exchange of experiences is very important through the establishment of agreements between the different Arab countries to strengthen this field with regard to youth entrepreneurship. Many graduates do not find job opportunities, so entrepreneurship is important for them. For a unified framework of reference for qualifications. This edition comes to ensure the quality of training and raise the level of human resources in the Arab countries. Training and education are basic maintenance of the human resource. Investment in the human resource, the human capital, will only take place through these conferences. 
aligning technical and vocational education and training with the labor market, the future of the green economy and digitization, was the theme of this edition. Arab participants in the conference aspire to make the meeting in Algeria a milestone to inaugurate a new era in joint regional action. Algerian Prime Minister Mr. Ayman bin Abdurrahman chaired on Monday in Algiers the opening of a conference on future challenges facing central banks, marking the 60th anniversary of the Bank of Algeria. Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman announced Algeria's intention to open branches for its banks in the Arab region in conjunction with expanding its banking network in Africa. Our country, Algeria, is one of the first countries to join the Albany Payments Platform in the Arab region, which is affiliated with the Regional Cooperation for Clearing and Settlement of Arab Payments. Under the authority of the Arab Monterey Fund, we seek in the future to open branches of Algerian banks in Arab countries. And in the same context, the governor of Bank of Algeria, Mr. Salah Haddin Talib, announced that the country's foreign exchange reserves exceeded the threshold of $60 billion, equivalent to two and a half years of imports and goods and services. Mr. Talib stressed that the Algerian banking system showed great resilience despite the difficult international conditions that were characterized in particular by the COVID-19 pandemic and the old shock since 2014. We achieved the balance of payments for the first surplus since 2014, which led to a rise in the exchange reserves, as today exceeds 60 billion US dollars for nearly a year and a half of the import of goods and services. It's also worth noting that the filling index of the banking system is enhanced by 22%. Over the course of three years, exceptional incentives and unprecedented measures were taken in the direction of improving the business climate in Algeria. The most recent, or the most recent one, was during the last cabinet meeting to make more facilities for the establishment of economic institutions. This will be linked to the government's plans in the field of encouraging entrepreneurship and pushing youth towards investing in productive and modern sectors all the while reducing the timeline for establishing the organization at the depart department level to one month. The 36th edition of the Asihar Business Exhibition has pushed Algeria forward to achieve a wider stature in the African market. Asihar Tamanrasa 2022 has proved that Algeria is able to become the gate to the Sahel region as business exchange and cooperation area, in addition to raising Algerian exports outside hydrocarbon sector. The details in this report by Usama Yedi. SCHR in its 36th edition has said the importance of Algeria as a gate to the African continent. This has promoted the stature of Algeria in economy and commerce. Several factors have put Algeria a step forward to enter the African market, which has seen an unprecedented activity. Tamin Rasset as a gate to the Sahel region will embody the aims of promoting Algerian exports, seeing the strategic location that Algeria is privileged with. Our product is well known, but we want to make it known in the African market so as at least it can have a destination, and a precise destination, and why not widening the brotherhood and cooperation with the African countries. Participants in the edition are commercial exhibitors and economic operators representing public and private companies from Algeria and neighboring countries. They exhibit a variety of food products, household appliance, building materials and others. A pavilion has also been set up for the exhibition of various handicrafts from several neighboring countries. <laughs> The Asihar exhibition is very positive because there is a development between Algeria, neighboring countries including Niger, Chad, Mali, Mauritania and Burkina Faso. This is the first time that such an activity happens with such positive impact. 
In the economic section of NC Hartam Rust, an international exhibition of products intended for export is planned with the participation of more than 100 economic operators and the first business meet in Algeria Sahel countries will be organized to develop trade with Sahel countries. As for the commercial aspect of the event, an exhibition and sale of mass consumption products is on the program with the participation of more than 100 Algerian exhibitors, including 40 craftsmen and 70 exhibitors from African countries. To a different topical news now, following a string of individual resistance clashes with Zionist forces that began in March, the Zionist entity launched a military campaign called Break the Wave that has included near daily raids, mass arrests and killings in the West Bank with a focus on Janine and Nablus. Zionist forces have ultimately arrested 11 Palestinian citizens as part of their oppressive and violent wave against civilians in occupied Palestine. A delegation from Ethiopia's federal government visited the capital of the war-torn Tigray region on Monday to oversee the implementation of last month's peace agreement. It is the first high-level federal delegation to travel to Tigray in two years. Tagisi Chafo, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, led the delegation, which included ministers and heads of public enterprises such as Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, Ethiopian Airlines and Ethio Telecom. Still in Africa, the Sudanese authorities announced that joint forces were able to control security situation in the state of southern Darfur. The region's mayor stated that the Mahaliyat Balil witnessed acts of violence and tribal confrontations that killed a number of citizens as well as a number of injured people, stressing that the decision to deter the people involved has led to a resurgence of calm for affected areas. He confirmed that the state of emergency imposed will continue until the situation returns to normal. To the Middle East now, the spokesman for the Iranian Foreign Ministry, Nasser Kanani, says that Western nations bet on a losing horse when they intervened in Iran's internal development, noting that they have since acknowledged their error in predicting the violent unrest. The Iranian diplomat also urged Western nations to stop acting improperly toward Iran, warning that such actions would be unfavorable to them. The governments that bet on Iran's internal developments bet on a losing horse. We had warned them not to sacrifice their interests to no avail. Russian President Mr. Vladimir Putin hosted on Tuesday the Commonwealth of Independent States CIS leaders in state or St. Petersburg, I'm saying, for the organization's yearly informal summit. The post-Soviet states will gather for a two-day meeting on December 26th and 27th. The Russian president said the meeting aims at continuing work together for mutual benefits with considerations of other countries' interests. The fact that we are reunited again in such a friendly circle testifies, in my opinion, with the eloquence of our desire to continue to build together cooperation in the space of CIS in the spirit of a true strategic partnership of mutual interest and taking into account the interests of all countries. After more than 10 months since the start of the war in Ukraine, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, declared that the time has come for negotiations. Mr. Lavrov added during the press conference in Moscow that the West has lost its credibility as a partner in political and economic relations and made it clear that everyone will soon witness a significant decline in the West's ability to lead the world. A Ukrainian drone was shot down on Monday morning as it approached the Engels base, but three service members were killed by falling debris. It was the second recent attack on the airbase, which is situated more than 450 miles southeast of Moscow and about 300 miles from the Ukrainian border. A boat containing over 57 Rohingya refugees reached the coast of Indonesia's western province of Ajay on Sunday. The refugees had spent nearly a month drifting at sea after their ship's engine broke before reaching the Indonesian shores. 
Another boat carrying nearly 200 people docked on the coast of the Indonesian province of Aceh. The refugees, including women and children, are receiving emergency care. My hope is uh, to go to Malaysia. And my father, my brother, mother is. Uh... Your family in where? Where is your family? Bangladesh, Rohingya camp. To Europe now, the mass shooting that took place in Paris and left three people dead is still making headline in France, especially that the French government has not precised the real underpinnings of the killing. France is today facing many accusations of being or having double standards in dealing with what they did not call a terrorist act. France's leaders were satisfied with insinuating that the act is racist. However, the Kurdish community did not accept that. We're demonstrating in the city of Hasaki to convey our message to the whole world and to the French government. The Kurdish people are fighting against annihilation and we're being massacred everywhere, even in Paris, the city of science, love and freedom. To America now, at least 27 people have died in Erie County, New York, as a result of a massive winter storm which blasted much of the United States in recent days. County officials said on Monday, bringing the nationwide death toll to 49. The updated number of deaths in Erie County, which includes the city of Buffalo, comes as parts of western New York remain buried by up to 43 inches of snow. More with Islam said. The blizzard paralyzed the United States over the week, plunging much of the country to deep freeze and complete whiteout conditions, with at least 55 storm-related deaths so far. The greater Buffalo region in New York has been one of the hardest hit places, with 25 deaths. The County Department of, uh, of Health Medical Examiner's Office uh, has confirmed 25 deaths across all of Erie County. Those also include uh, those in the city of Buffalo. The National Weather Service has recorded more than 120 centimeters of snow in Buffalo. Cars and buses were buried under towering snow drifts, and high lift equipment was being used for hospital transports where ambulances could not drive. Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown said on Monday that some residents have been discovered dead outside after venturing out in blizzard conditions. I want to make it very clear that we need people to stay off the roads. Uh, you will still get stuck out there. Many streets in the city of Buffalo are still impassable. New York's governor warned that the danger from the massive blizzard is not over yet. Residents and emergency crews in western New York have been working around the clock to dig out the heavy snow and save people are possibly trapped inside their cars. And this blizzard is the one for the ages. Certainly it is the blizzard of the century. Uh, maybe the severity is downplaying now, and right now it's not as bad as it had been over the last couple of days, but it is still a dangerous situation to be out. The thick snow covered Buffalo Airport by Sunday, with hundreds of flights already canceled and more expected after the bomb cyclone. According to news reports, all that deaths related to extreme cold or weather-induced vehicle accidents were reported in Missouri, Tennessee, Kansas and Colorado. The deadly winter storm is expected to continue unleashing its fury on much of the United States, stretching from Canada to the Mexican border. New York has seen the worst blizzard in 45 years, which took form late on Friday and pummeled the state through the holiday weekend. And in a different development, 71 Chinese Air Force aircraft, including fighter jets and drones, entered Taiwan's air defense identification zone in the past 24 hours. The island's government said on Monday, the largest reported incursion to date. Of the aircraft, 43 also crossed the Taiwan Strait's median line, an unofficial buffer between the two sides that lies within the defense zone. Taiwan's defense ministry said in a report as Beijing continues military activities close to the Chinese claimed island. In Asia still, the Joint Chiefs of Staff of South Korea reported that its military discovered five North Korean drones crossing the border, one of which had made it as far north as the capital region, before sending out fighter jets and attack helicopters to shoot down the North Korean drones. The military fired warning shots as a response. According to the Defense Ministry, one of the aircraft, KA-1, light attack plane, 
crashed during takeoff, but both of its two pilots managed to eject to safety. The South Korean military detected an identified target, believed to be North Korean drones, in Jeonji province this morning, and took responsive actions. This is a clear provocation by North Korean violation South Korean airspace. After initially detecting a North Korean drone crossing over the military demarcation line near Jimpo, our military had warning broadcasts and fired warning shots according to the procedures I responded to the extent that it did not cause damage to our citizens. For more news making headlines around the world, let's follow the news in brief by Sofian Kenturi. The Ukrainian armed forces, together with the National Guard of Ukraine, conducted military drills in an undisclosed location, which military said was near the border of Belarus. The maneuvers prompted suggestions from Ukrainian officials that Russia may be planning a fresh attack on Ukraine via Belarusian territory, as it did unsuccessfully in the early days of its war in Ukraine. The humanitarian crisis in Sri Lanka is worsening following acute shortages of daily necessities including food, fuel and cooking gas, as the country's economy is seeing a massive downturn and soar inflation. The country saw violent protests forcing the president to resign, with a new dispension taken over in August. Volunteers on Sunday helped move children with men and women from their homes after flash floods hit Gingog City in Philippines on Christmas Day. Data from Social Welfare Ministry showed on Monday that nearly 46,000 people were sheltering in evacuation centers. Brazil's incoming Justice Minister Flavio Dino said on Monday that security for the inauguration of elected President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva will be reinforced following the arrests of a man for attempting to set off a bomb in Brasilia. Well, that's it for our English News Bulletin. For more, visit our social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Take care.